would like to present a position that shows um, the position of over 2,000 women that represents um, the energy, oil, and gas industry in Nigeria. And when we were sent this invite, what we did was to call a meeting, a seven-day meeting of women in the industry across the upstream, the downstream, the midstream, gas, power, renewable energies, across the entire value chain, and we were taking inputs. You know, we told them, so we went through the entire page one to page 238 um, bill. So, um, so what I'm presenting here is the voice of um, women that represent the industry across board, across all regions. Okay, so thank you very much. Um, um, we are women in energy, oil, and gas. We, we started operations in Nigeria in 2018, and then we were incorporated in 2019. And then um, since our incorporation, we have a vision to actually um, help Nigeria see how we can close the gaps we have in the industry. The first gap we're looking at is the energy poverty we have in the nation. It is really, really embarrassing. The second gap has to do with the transformational effect of Nigeria hosting the energy, um, and, uh, you know, the, the extractives, fifth largest oil producing nation in the world, ninth largest gas reserve in the world, and unfortunately, we are also considered as the poverty headquarter of the world. There is no tandem. How can we in indeed turn this extractive into riches? And um, I personally did a research about two years ago when um, renewables became a bit more popular. And I like to use the platform to correct the notion that our crude oil is not going to waste. Neither is our crude oil, even though our reserve we go down, yeah. But the crude oil will not waste even when renewables and all the other energy mixes comes on board. Why? We will only change our mix. We will change from PMS, we will change from AGO, we will change from DPK, we will do bitumen, we will do more of petrochemicals, we will do more of pharmaceutical, because from that one, one barrel, from that one barrel of crude oil, you can actually bring out about 250 products. And out of all these 250 products, Nigeria virtually imports all the 250 products. We import bitumen. I'd worked with a bitumen company before. 100% of the bitumen used in this nation, we still have a lot of road that's not been fixed. They are all imported. The pharmaceuticals, they are imported. The cosmetics, we have a lot of women. I do makeup. All that are things that are from the crude oil. We have the petroleum jelly. We have the shirts. We have the rubber. We have quite a number of things. We have the naphtha. Too many things. So the, our crude oil is not going to waste even if the energy mix and energy transition happens. Thank you very much. Now, um, having done that review, we have seven points. Sorry. Okay, so. Thank you very much. So, um, we, when we did the seven day review, we came up with seven points agenda, seven points position um, that we would like this house to consider and to adopt. And um, the first point is about the name of the bill. I, I've, been, I've been in this industry for about 25 years. And um, 20 years ago, we had been you know, trying to push this bill, and it's never happened. I said something at the Senate session yesterday. Looks like there's a jinx around the name. Now, the world has moved. Whether we, are, we accept it or not, the world has moved beyond petroleum. The world has moved to energy. The world is now talking about energy value chain, you know, from uh, everything. So I would like to use this platform to propose that we should change that name because what is what doing is what doing well. Let's consider changing that name from petroleum industry bill to energy industry bill because... Because I know that, yeah, it takes a while to do the gazetting and all that, but it's not just about us coming up with a document that will become obsolete in another three years or in another five years. Because the rate at which Tesla cars are coming on now, the rate at which all the other energy renewables are coming on now, it is going to take over the fuel. That is the reality of things. Okay, so that's the first point. The second point says um, all stream. I'm not... Okay, thank you. The second point talks about all stream integration. 
In this nation, our focus is 80% on upstream extractives and upstream assets. We abandon the midstream, we abandon the downstream, and that is why we are here where we are. That is why we set into recession anytime there is a flip flop in the oil and gas, oil, oil price. What do we do to fix the situation? We need to go all stream, live upstream, live downstream, live midstream, go all stream, go full integration. That's the way forward. That's $50 per barrel crude. When it is fully refined and fully utilized, is worth about $2,500. That is the kind of money Nigeria had been putting on the table. I did analysis of the, the, pro, the, the, the kind of money America make from plastic last year. They made close to about $20 billion from plastic. And unfortunately, Nigeria still imports like 80% of our plastic into Nigeria. So we need to really go full integration. And that has to be captured in that bill for it to be really, to really affect and cause transformational change in the nation. So that's the second uh, position. The third position says tapping the untapped reserve. And that is the gender inclusion. I won't overflop that one because our sister company had already done that already. Then the fourth one talks about the host community. I won't also overflop that one because I know there are a lot of host people here. But what I would say about the host community bill is talking about the women and the children in the host community. If you train a woman, you train a nation, you train a generation. We talk about host communities a lot, but we don't talk about the women in the host communities. I want us to look at the foundational issues, not just giving them scholarship at university level, give them scholarship from primary school level, give them scholarship from secondary school level, introduce them to STEM, and empower the women. Shell in Texas, as old as Texas is with oil and gas still train women, host community women in Texas on supply chain management and they give them contracts and the, the, the companies are mandated to ensure they are given contracts. So we can also train this woman, women. And if the women are trained, the woman will want his son, her son, and say, don't go and vandalize that pipeline. That is where we eat from. Thank you. Then the next, the last, um, the number one, I don't know, the fourth one is the fact that we are, gas is the way forward. I have seen what nations have done with gas. Gas is the way forward for us in Nigeria, and we will actually solve a lot of problems we currently have if we have gas. So I'd like to ask that there is full inclusion of gas. The, the Minister of State of the Federal Ministry of Petroleum Resources has declared 2021 to 2030 our gas decade. We need to maximize that. So we need to see vocabularies like gas, gas, gas value chain, gas, commercial, I mean, gas flare commercialization, upstream gas, midstream gas, downstream gas, everything gas. And you will see the transformation this nation will experience in maximum of five years. Then the next one is the African trade, Af African continental free trade. Unfortunately, that is not even mentioned in the bill at all. Just this January, we signed that agreement. And Nigeria, when, when I was a year, was much younger, Nigeria was labeled the giant of Africa. But we had lost that almost to Ghana, almost to all the other nations. So what do we do? Let us leverage on the AFTRAC agreement and get back, get, get back to that position as number one. We've got all it takes. So our oil and gas free trade zone needs to be enhanced, and that needs to be captured in the bill as well. So our really, no, no, nothing was mentioned around that at all, even in the, in, in the entire bill. So that should be included. And then the very last, the second to the last one is the new frontiers. Now, how do we treat new frontiers? Oil has just been discovered in Meduguri. I say congratulations to all our northern people. That's a fantastic one. But the bill did not capture how this will be treated. So it's not, it, it, it won't be good for us to sign the bill, I mean, to pass the bill now, and then another one year or two years, new frontiers come on, and there is nothing to cover them. So we need to look back at the bill and see that new frontiers are well covered. And finally is the governance. Finally, yeah, is the governance. We need, the gov we need, we need to have a full mix in our governing council. Currently, we have some bodies, I'm not going to mention the names, but today they are all male, you know, male leaders there. 
you know, uh, we need to have a very good mix. Because the 50% had been wasting, if I may use that word, has been latent, if I may use that word. And most of them are actually exiting this nation to go to other nations where they can be appreciated. So let's, let's make the best use of it. Let women also be in the governing bodies. Let them be in the governing council, NMPC, PEF, PTD, everything. Let's also have women. I'm a Christian. There's a part that says it is not good that men should be alone. So I say it is not good that men should be alone in oil and gas. Let's also invite, allow the women to be part of it. We want to help you to make it happen. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Thank you very much.